Michael Prince, maybe not a great defender against uh, AC Law, but maybe they didn't like what they saw available around AC. Well, I, I think that's the situation. Prince jumped out there on him, and AC Law is outside that three-point line on the wing, not able to get any penetration coming around the pick, and I think Billy Gillespie just wanted to stop it right there and reset the Aggies. There's our, uh, the Red Raiders will be back in United Spirit Arena on Wednesday, January 31st. They'll take on the Texas Longhorns. Tip-off is 8 o'clock. If you want tickets, call 806-742-TECH or 1-888-GO-BIG-12. How's that for a three-game stretch at home? Kansas, A&M, and then Texas. Texas got a pretty good guy playing for him as well, Kevin Durant. You like the premier players in the Big 12. A.C. Law, Joe Jones here. Kansas has got plenty of them, and Kevin Durant and the Longhorns next time out right here. Well, a 15,000-plus strong here at United Spirit Arena, probably losing their voice because I thought going into this one that a lot of times in tight battles like this one, the fans can play a factor in a big game. And Billy Gillespie has said that about the Aggie fans. And Bob Knight recognized that from the Red Raider faithful, especially the students in the upset win over Kansas. Well, and, and certainly you have to think that the Aggies want the ball in the hands of A.C. Law. Now, somewhat of a mismatch inside. Plefka is fouled out of the ball game. Kavalaskis being defended by Michael right Prince. Now, Bob Knight wanted to see the set, and now he calls timeout. Yeah, Prince, Jay Jackson, Dora, Burgess, and Martin Zeno. John Plefka fouled out about a minute and a half ago. And Plefka left with 17 points, a combined 37 between Zeno and John Plefka. Red Raider basketball brought to you today by Larry Anders of Summit Alliance Companies of Dallas. Tell you how tough the defense has gotten down the stretch of the ball game with three and a half minutes to go. The Aggies were in front 63-62. It's now Texas Tech 68 67. That's only a total of 10 points scored combined between these teams in the final three and a half minutes of the game. It has become very tough to get a shot to fall. You're telling me after AM, it's Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. The next four on the schedule for the Red Raiders. Not much easier for AM. Undefeated right now in the Big 12 with just 9.3 seconds left and the inbound the basketball. Zeno's going to drop down and not let the Aggies just bring the ball directly down low to Antonis Cavalasca. Surely they want the ball to go outside. And Zeno stole it. They tried to get it to inside to Joe Jones, and Jones is going to be out of the game. You talk about looking at your intended receiver in football, Dominique Kirk stared right in the middle and still threw the basketball. And the Red Raiders had three defenders there. I mean, you have to think they're going to get it in the hands of A.C. Law. Instead, they try to lob it right where the Red Raiders have three defenders. They lobbed it at the one place on the floor where the Red Raiders were clustered the most. Three defenders in that area. I don't know what they were thinking. Well, how are you going to throw it that far and throw it over Martin Zeno? I mean, Martin Zeno can just absolutely fly. Now, Dora was behind Joe Jones. But Zeno kind of playing like the, the free safety. Right there waiting on the pass, and the Aggies threw it right to him. But only one, one second ran off the clock, so Zeno's got to make a couple of shots here. Yeah, these are big ones, and you remember Zeno, after the timeout, missed the second one, which would have made it 69-67, and really a chance to have made it more than a two-possession game at the uh, at the line. It's a one-possession game. It's 68-67 right now. Red Raiders are out of timeouts. Aggies still have two. <laughs> wow. That was the home bounce right there. Wow. Going to make gonna make a sweat there for a moment. That one hit every bite a bit of the rim it could. And was the collect collective gasp <laughs> in United Spirit Arena. It was pretty strong right there. And there you see 15,000 holding their breath. Well, and you've got two good coaches here. Bob Knight, the record obviously speaks for itself. Billy Gillespie has done it all through his career. He's really done a dramatic turnaround over the last couple of years with this Texas A&M program to have them where they are, ranked sixth in the country uh, with eight point 
Zero seconds left to go in this game. And I think you saw the respect between the two of them before the game right in front of us, John, as uh, the, two, the two coaches spent quite a bit of time comparing notes with each other. Talked for quite a while, and clearly Bob Knight telling Gillespie he's having an outstanding year. I mean, the Aggies have won 16 of 18 games. There are only two losses to teams that reached the final four of the NCAA tournament a year ago. They really have played well. I tell you what, Bob Knight's Red Raiders have certainly played well last couple of times out as well. Well, and A&M giving up an average of just 53.3 points per game coming into this one, one of the three lowest in the country totals. The Red Raiders with 69 on the board. So you've got two pretty good defenses out here who have had some offensive players step up in a big way and maybe no bigger way in, it, in that last time out coming from the Aggies calling that 30 second timeout to maybe ice Martin Zeno just one more time well they have used them all now both teams are out of timeouts Zeno can knock it down the Aggies are forced to hit a three-pointer they're all out I don't have any left you don't have any left John no. but I will tell you that we've got plenty of the 880 collectible merchandise on hand the t-shirts, the basketballs, the game programs, they're available through the Texas Tech men's basketball program just by you calling 806-742-7410 for more information. Uh, that'll be a pretty cool thing to have for a long, long time because I don't think anybody's going to touch that record for quite a while. Not for a while. Aggies beat the Red Raiders both times they played last season. This really a big one for Texas Tech in Big 12 play. You know, as you go on through the season, you're playing for position in that postseason tournament. Want that bye in the opening round. A little bit fresher as you play in the second and third, and can you get to the championship game? But this will open up some eyes if you knock off a team ranked sixth in the country after beating the number five team. And Martin Zeno with a smile on his face. Looked over and said, well, nobody has any more timeouts, right? He fires it in and good. A three-point game. All the Aggies can do is tie this one up and send it to overtime if they hit a three. Eight seconds left. Full court pressure put on by the Red Raiders on the inbound. Law there you go. defended by Burgess, but not a bad foul right there. Not, not at all because all AC Law can do is make two free throws. He'll have to make one and miss one and hope the Aggies rebound and they don't have Joseph Jones, who is fouled out. Yeah, Joseph Jones and John Plefka, one pretty big player on both teams, has fouled out. And, and now Charlie Burgess, that's number five on him. And Demir Suljagic, who opened up the game playing, will check back in. For a, for a transfer player to the Red Raider program, that was a pretty good foul in tough situations for Charlie Burgess, who has had uh, some pretty tight defenses to have to play against one of the conference's best players. Well, he spent some of the night defending A.C. Law. Aggies are trying to figure out who they get into the lineup here that can go for a rebound. They want to put it, bring Ilanu in to bring a little bit more size to try to maybe tip the basketball out on a miss, sh miss shot by A.C. Law. Because if A.C. makes the first, which he does. Only say, choice is to miss. And Billy Gillespie looking at that right now. And he just no, threw no, it no. out there. You can't do that. Yeah, did not touch the rim. Uh -uh. Did no, not he, touch the rim. It's Texas Tech's basketball. Yeah, it's going to be Red Raider basketball. You can't do it like that. And Alan Vosco will check in here on this final possession. They want to get their best free throw shooters in there. Sloan got back that in. basketball back after he made that first shot and then just kind of rocketed one up there and missed the rim. He's, he had big men inside, but he missed the rim. And, and that dead ball, Texas Tech's basketball. Well, and while the officials are talking this one over, I think they're going to look at a replay and de decide did the ball actually miss the rim, but I certainly thought it did. I'll have to be honest. I think I'll have to see it again in the replay here if we're able to get it. All right. Our television crew showing it to the officials right there before we can get it. And they feel pretty good about it. It didn't take long for no. him to make a decision. No, I mean, hey, I never claim to be able to see something in uh, instantaneous mode like that. That's what replays are all about. Just look at the quick toss 
Oh, yeah, no doubt. Great job of camera work right there. Yeah, you would have seen the ball kind of change direction a little bit if it would have touched the rim or glanced it in any way. It's close. It did not. Just came flying right back to A.C. Law. Jackson, though, spot throw in. Jackson with the long toss to Martin Zeno, wide open. He's going to dribble it out. And the Red Raiders have taken out two top ten teams in one week. 70 to 68. The Red Raiders now at 15 and 5. Overall, 4 and 1 in the conference. And here you go. I'll tell you what, it's been a huge week for the Red Raiders. And down the stretch in two games, They've been able to hold on and find ways to beat two top 10 teams. Well, these students have been waiting here since 1.30 this afternoon in line. It paid off for them right here. Not much studying going on in Lubbock tonight. <laughs> no, not 70 at all. to 68. You've almost seen the entire floor covered. Martin Zeno late in the ball game at the free throw line. John Plefka early on, the hero for the Red Raiders, making some very big shots. And Chris Beard, assistant coach, a kiss on the forehead to Daryl Dora right in front of us. It is a very jubilant coaching staff, 70 to 68. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the RCA player of the game in the post-game wrap-up after another upset. You've been watching Red Raider basketball on the Texas Tech Television Network.